Now hopefully my camera won't go out of sync again, but if it does, oh well. We're just going to be talking about the top five meta decks post Albaz Structure Deck. And before we get into it, I just want to thank you all so much for being patient, understanding that I had to go out of town to go and get my MRI scans done for my VHL slash cancer, all that stuff that I talked about in my previous video. So thank you so much for being understanding with that. Thank you for being understanding that there's no retrospect about. I'm hoping to work on that this week while I'm recovering from being injected twice with contrast and being in an MRI machine for almost three hours. Yeah, it's it's not fun. So with all that out of the way, thank you so much for your patience, and let's dive on in to the top five meta decks. This list is in no particular order, by the way. I'm just going to be going through the top five decks of the meta post Albaz. So anyway, at number five, we have Flunderies. Now, Flunderies did just top one of the regionals that happened this past weekend, which I wasn't able to go to the Florida one because I was at my doctor, which sucks. <laughs> I would much rather be playing in a regional for nearly three hours instead of being in an MRI machine for two hours and 40 minutes. But I digress. <laughs> um, Flunderies is still going to be a very good pick going into post Albaz format, which is in just a couple of weeks, uh, because of the fact that no special summoning means you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! and you can't have fun. Now, one thing I think will change with the deck is the fact that some builds are playing Flunderies in the Scary Sea. The issue with Scary Sea that you need to keep in mind, however, is that it only stops inherent summons. So, for example, if you special summon a Cyber Dragon from your hand, you can activate Scary Sea to lock the opponent out of special summoning for the rest of the turn. But if they play Branded Fusion, Fusion Destiny, what have you, you can't stop that with Scary Sea. So really, Scary C in your Albaz matchup is pretty much useless. I think Featherstorm is still going to be fantastic moving forward because then they can't use Lubelion, they can't use Mirror Jade, D-Shifter is still going to be a mainstay in the deck. That's never going to change because you shut them out of Mirror Jade. Um, and really, the matchup as a whole, from what I've been testing, is not that hard as a Flunderies player. And I've been playing Flunderies for months now. I, mean, I know the deck inside now, forwards, backwards, sideways. I could play it with my eyes closed. <laughs> um... It's really not that tough of a matchup. It's really one of those things where it's like, if you're able to go first, then you're going to have a much easier time beating the deck than if you know you go second and just can't win. Now, something I did notice in the build that just came in fourth place, I believe it was in Indiana that Robbie Cole covered, was that the guy was main decking three copies of Dark Ruler No More instead of using Imperm. And I think that that's really interesting because if you do go second, it makes your going second game much easier because if the opponent sets up Mirror Jade and they also have Brandon and Red, which basically just means they have two Mirror Jades on the board, then you can use uh, Dark Ruler No More to just completely shut them out. Yeah, sure, they can make another Mirror Jade and whatever, but you know that's the risk that you play playing against that deck. At number four, I have based, aka as we call it on the channel, Badass Sexy Engine deck. Now, apparently the Albaz Structure deck and the Despia cards and all that actually mix in with base really well post Albaz Structure deck. I haven't been able to find any builds, not even any really any videos about based with Albaz specifically, but apparently it mixes in really well. And when you're playing a deck like Badass Sexy Engine that has so many different engines in a 60 card deck, why wouldn't Albaz work well? I mean, it really does make sense. Plus, you have the Brave Engine and, you know, just anything else that you want to play in the deck. So, it seems that it would really mix in well. Now, why am I covering Based and, uh, you know, Albaz as two separate lists? Well, that's because of the fact that Base is its own deck. And not everything really revolves around base because all, a bunch of other decks can compete. And it's going to be interesting to see if pure Albaz is going to be better than base. I still feel like base is going to be pretty good whether or not they have the Albaz support in their deck. I mean, Albaz is just that good that it can be splashed into many different things. Um, but with base and the boards it can make, uh, yeah, Albaz is going to have a hard time, especially if they are playing an Albaz engine themselves, which makes Fallen Albaz himself much stronger. But regardless, it's still going to be a great deck moving forward. And at number three, I have Prank Kids. Now, apparently Prank Kids won the Florida Regional, which doesn't surprise me, especially considering I know a local Florida player here that plays like 19 hand traps in his Prank Kids build with the Adventure Engine. So Prank Kids is only, I feel, going to get better and better as you go forward. Um, you know, it's... 
it's a really complicated deck. I used to know it in and out, you know, uh, back when Bomber Dragon was still a thing, or Topologic Gumblar. Yeah, Gumblar, the one that rips cards out of your hand. Uh, it's always been a good deck, and with the Adventure Engine, it gets even better. And I feel like moving forward, even post Albaz, that Prank Kids is just going to be still a good deck. They may even run the Albaz Engine. Who knows? Um, the meta decks that are good now are, I feel, still going to be good, but Albaz is going to be another variable that they have to consider with their matchups. But if you're playing Prank Kids, I feel like you're still going to have an easy time against the Albaz deck. And at number two brings us to the Albaz Structure Deck. Despia, Albaz, Brandy, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be fantastic. You know, you pick up three Structure Decks, maybe Alubar's in it, maybe it's not. I actually bought a case of Dawn of Majesty last week and I pulled three freaking Alubar's. I was so happy. We pulled like eight branded openings. We pulled everything we needed. I can't believe I pulled three Alubar's out of that. It was like every two boxes I pulled one. But anyway, um... You know, you get three of those, and if you already have Alu Bars, then great. If not, then you're going to have to probably make some concessions or just play a different deck. Um, but the Albaz deck moving forward is just, it has so much potential, and it's so good, and there's so many different ways to build it because of all the different support cards that they have. I've seen builds that focus on Masquerade, the Blazing Dragon, getting out multiple copies of that with Chain Energy. So they have to pay 500 life points to play a card, then they have to pay 600 life points to even activate a card effect. And just being able to burn the opponent out like that, it adds up. It's like Trick Stars. So that's just one build or one way of playing it. You know, when you have all these different ways to play a deck, the variables are just insane. You may see 16 Albaz decks top, and each one is different from the last. It's so versatile. It's so good. And Mirror Jade in of itself is a busted-ass card. If you go first and get that established, even if that's like the only card that you have plus back row, I mean, it's still really freaking good. And the fact that it can play DPE and Dragoons, yeah, it may not be all that consistent, but it's the fact that you can. <laughs> so you got to be prepared for this deck going forward. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And finally, at number one, I have Sword Soul. Sword Soul is still a very good deck going forward. Um, I would say that it's, you know, Obviously better than, say, something like Dogmatic on Bookshadal that used to really be a good Tier 1 deck. Now it's kind of like 1.5 Tier 2, debatably. Um, but Sword Soul is going to be that always very good, very consistent Tier 1 deck, even without Protos. And it's very malleable, similar to Albaz. You know, I think what you're going to see moving forward is that all these decks, minus Flunderies, are going to be playing some form of an Albaz branded engine just because it's that splashable. You know, people have been talking about how there's going to be another power creep when that structure deck comes out where decks are going to evolve, decks are going to change. You know, you're going to see Sword Soul, but then maybe a branded adventure engine. Like a lot of decks now are going to become adventure branded and then whatever engine they're playing so for example adventure branded prank kids adventure branded sword soul like i, I feel like that that's really what's going to happen um that's why you're really not going to probably see a huge shift in the meta decks as a whole once albaz comes out because albaz can just make some of those decks much more powerful or you can play it on its own with 103 to 105 dollar copies of alabars <laughs> and you know just keep playing in the meta that you're in whether or not we get a ban list this month or next month is obviously up for debate as well. I don't know, but I really don't feel like that they're going to hit Albaz in any way. Um, you know, maybe they'll hit other things in the format to kind of ease back all these other meta decks so that they're not as powerful. But regardless, Albaz is still just going to be insane, whether it's in Sword Soul or even just Sword Soul in general, it's still going to be very strong. So guys, please let me know what you thought about this top five list. I apologize for all the jump cuts. I want to make sure that I was very accurate and informative and also not making videos for three days has left me a little bit rusty. Um, so you're going to have to forgive me on that. I'm, I'm used to having scripts in front of me. Um, but guys, please let me know what you think in the comments below. It feels good to be getting back to making videos. I hope that you enjoyed and thank you all again for so much support. It really does mean a lot. Eventually we're going to get to 700 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.